Hi, in this session I'll show you how to create a tornado chart. A tornado chart is otherwise also known as a butterfly chart, but the tornado name is probably more appropriate since the butterfly chart, a butterfly's wings, it, it would be more symmetrical. In contrast, a tornado, it's very uh, erratic, the, it's not really symmetrical. But this tornado chart is reflected off two tables, and I'll kind of explain the two tables here in the chart to get a better understanding of how it gets created. So we have the data here where this area, these first columns A, B, and C really represent the what's shown here on the chart, what's visible. You have our data for west, we have our data for east, we have our labels here. Now these other columns here are kind of invisible uh, data points that help create this chart. This padding here, if I select on it, if I select here, you'll see that it shows the invisible padding, and this is the padding for the west. If I select over here, you have invisible padding for the east. Basically, dummy data that helps create this chart. And in the middle, if I select in here, you'll see that it selects the table here, and this is kind of dummy data to help create this chart. So what, what I do to create this chart, I actually got this idea off uh, databison.com, a very good site to to kind of give, give some basic instructions, which I kind of um, enhance a little bit. So what's being done here is when we look at our data from uh, rows, excuse me, columns A, B, and C, we want to look at see what the maximum value is. So in this case, uh, the maximum value is 97. So we kind of have, we can put a padding of 100 on each side. So we don't, you don't want to go like 1,000, get, get, get the area going from here to here too much or here to here too much. So what I would do is create padding on one side and create padding on another side. So we see here the largest value here is 97. So we can put a padding of 100 on each side. So the greatest value is from the center to the left is 100 and the center here to the right is 100. So what we need to do is create some padding here for the west. So here it's just a formula 100 minus B2. So 100 minus 97 is 300 minus 100 minus 32 is 68. So that goes all the way down. So there's a formula here that we create and we just copy it down. On the other side it's the same thing but just the inverse. So we have 100 minus the east and that gives our padding here. So 100 minus 0, of course, is 100. 100 minus 83 is 17, etc. So that gives that padding here. Now in the middle, we we give it a padding. I give it here a padding of 25. So I kind of want to stick with quartile since I've done 100. Uh, this gap can be anywhere from. You can pretty much give it any value when you really think about it. But to give it a little bit more uniform because uh, we're at 100 and I want to stick with quartiles, you can do thirds if you want to. But in this case, I'm using 25 as the gap, so it's kind of a nice, uh, nice gap here. Now, there's another table here that's being used, and what this table does is it creates these labels. You see these labels down here? Because there's not really a label that you can create neatly uh, that goes from 0 over to the left and 0 over to the right. So you kind of have to do a hack and create a label, and that's using a, another table here. Basically, this is an X y scatter. This table is used to create an xy uh, scatter chart. So let's see how we create this. Let me go ahead and just copy this data. I'm going to go and copy this data here. Select that control C to copy and then control V to paste. Now this is all in here. And let me go ahead and select this data too. Control C to copy, control V to paste. So what I'm going to do with this data right now uh, you, you notice that the data changes if I kind of move it around because I have this uh, randomized right now. There's a, it selects a random number between 0 and 100. And so if I uh, change things around, if I move do Control c and Control v or, or I press the F9 key, it will change the data. That's just a, a little uh, trick there. But let's go ahead and just work with the data that I've copied over here. It's copied everything, even the formulas. But let's put this into a chart. So what we need to do is create a stacked bar chart. I'm going to be in this table. I'll go ahead and just click into the insert rib, into the insert tab of the ribbon, and go to bar chart and select the 2D stacked bar chart. So this creates this chart here. And what I want to do is I want to I'm going to bring this legend and put it up on the top. Let me go ahead click that legend, go layout, go to legend and show it at the top here. All right? So what I want to do next is 
kind of order the series of data here. So I'm going to click into the chart here, right click and go under select data. So what we want to do first is have, we want to have the padding, the padding for the west here first, and then second would be the west, third would be the gap, fourth would be the east, and then the padding for the east there. And we want to go into the legend entry series and rearrange our data. So we want the padding west to go first. Just select that and just move that up. And then we want west to go second. We want the gap to go third. Select that and move that to third. And then we have our east and then the padding east. So this is how it should look. Padding west, west, gap, east, and padding east. Now what we want to do here is turn three of them invisible in essence. So I want to take the padding west, select that. You can see it's selected. I can right click and under the bucket, the shape fill, make that no fill. Right? And also make the outline, because then if you if you just do a no fill there, the, the fill is gone, but then the outline is still going to be there. So I'm going to select that shape outline and go no outline. So now you see that it's disappeared. I want to do the same for the padding east. So I'm going to select one of these that are, that are large. And since it already shows up, right click here, it already uh, takes from the last uh, entries that I did. I'm just going to go ahead and click on the bucket. You can see the shape fill. It's kind of a transparent or no fill uh, indicator there. And I'm just going to click that shape outline, no fill. And you see that it's gone there. So now I'm going to do the same with the gap here. You can see that it's gone in the legend too. So I'm going to select the gap, right click and select shape fill none and shape outline none. So now we have to be, you know, start to see the little tornado chart a little bit more. I'm going to get rid of these grid lines here. I, I don't like these grid lines. Uh, they don't look that good. So let me try to select one of these vertical grid lines without selecting anything else. Oh, I did not select it. I can just press the delete key to get rid of that. In the gap, I want to show these uh, item numbers. I want to show that. So I'm going to select in here. You can see that it selected the gap. Even though it doesn't seem it's there, it's basically just hidden. And I'm going to right click that and click add data labels. After I add data labels, what it's going to do is it's going to add the data. I don't want the data. I just I want the the name. So I'm going to go under format data series and whoops, not format data series. It's format data labels. Right click and format data labels. And instead of having the value, I want to have the category name. So now it's go it goes items 1 to 7. Let me go ahead and close that. Okay, now I don't need this access label, so I'm going to go ahead and right click that and go to format access. And I don't want to have that access label, so let me go ahead and move this and when I select it you'll see that it disappears. Click that to none and I don't want that line. So I'm going to go to that line color and click no line. So that basically makes it disappear. So that's gone. What I want to do now is I want to change this axis. And enable to change the, the axis here, the labels, to reflect 0 going to 100 over here to the left and also 0 to 100 to the right. I have to include another table. So I'm going to select the chart here and go under Design and select Data. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add another data point. So I'm going to click Add. The series name doesn't really matter as much, but I'm just going to go ahead and select that here. And the series value, I'll just select from. I'll delete that and just select one of the series values here. And click OK. And you'll see that it's it's added it's added it and it looks really funky. So but what I'm gonna do is I'm instead of having that as a bar chart, I'm gonna turn that into an XY scatter diagram. So select that, right click, you can see that's the X axis. Right click I'm a, and I'm gonna select series chart name. We can also have when you go into design, you can also change the chart type here. So there's a couple places where you can change it. But since I right clicked it, I'm just going to go ahead and select that. And instead of bar, I'm going to go under here for the XY scatter and select the scatter with only markers. I'm going to click that, click OK, and you can see now it has put it as an XY scatter chart. Now I just need to do a little bit more adjusting because I only have my X series, I don't have my Y series, or <laughs> I've got the, I've only got one data point here. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and select everything and right click that and go under select data. So this brings it up the select data source one more time. I'm going to go under x axis and click edit. 
Now, now it gives me the option to add the x and y values. So for the x, x value, for the x axis value, I'm going to select this one, 25 to 200. And for the y value, let me go and delete that. So let me go ahead and select this one. So let me give you some in, a little bit of explanation on why I selected these. So let me give you some explanation on the series x value and the series y value. So the series x value is basically our plots around here. So you can see that it's selecting 25, 50, 75, 100. So we're looking at 25 over here, and then 50 over here, and then 75 over here. So it's going to cross the spectrum here. And you can see our values kind of fall in line. And our y values are going from 75 to 0, and then 0 to 75. So basically what it's doing is 100 to 125 here is our 0 point, right? And then as it goes, as these values on the top here are 75, 50, these decrease from here, they decrease to 0, and then 0 goes back up from 25 increments. So once it gets to here, it goes back 25, 50, 75. Um, so it gives us kind of like a V, but we're, what we're going to do is we're going to flatten that V, and you can see we'll, you'll be seeing why later. But that's that's the 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 image that we're going to get. So once I close, click OK, and close that, you'll see that we have these points. So when I created the X Y scatter chart, it actually put the another axis. This is a secondary Y axis there. And so what I'm going to do is I need to format this a little bit. So I'm going to select that axis. I want to flatten this. And so instead of having zero to eighty. I'm going to have it go from 0 to a really large number, like 1,000. So let me go ahead and select. I'll just select that to 0, fix that 0. And the maximum, the maximum, I'm going to make that 1,000. So once I make it 1,000, it, in essence, it goes from 0 to 1,000. And all these get flattened because 80, if, it, if the range is to 1,000 here, 80 would really be somewhere down here. and 20 would be re even lower. So it all looks like it's all on one line visually, but if you kind of expand the chart out, it will show you that it's different. So let's see how that looks. Let me go and close that, and now you can see that it's basically put everything on almost like one line, but that's because our range of our axis is so high from 0 to 1,000. Let me go ahead and now just kind of make that invisible. I'm going to go right click and go into Format Axis and have uh, none for the access label and for the line color I don't want to have a line so basically just made that invisible I made it disappear now these what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the labels here and these labels that are here is going to basically uh, go over the label that the line label that's already here so really we're just kind of masking it so what I'm gonna do is select the the markers here right click and add data labels and then now you see the data labels 0 to 75 that's over here this first set here and then 0 to 75 over here I'm gonna bring those data labels instead of having it over to the right I'm gonna bring it to the bottom so I'm gonna go into format data labels and select the label position as below click close and you can see that it's it's kind of on top of the axis. So I don't need that axis label anymore. I'm going to select the axis here, see? And then right click, go into Format Axis, and Axis Labels, None, and click Close, and you can see those labels are gone, and this label here appears. Let me go ahead and move the chart plot area up a little bit so you can see it better. And I don't need these markers anymore, so I'm going to take click on one of the markers, and you can see they're highlighted. Right click, go into Format Data Series, and for the marker options, none. And click Close. And now you can see that the it's almost finished here. Now for the legend, I'll just go ahead and remove the other uh, ca other legend categories. Let me go ahead and delete that. The gap I don't need. Let me go ahead and delete that. Just press it twice. Click it twice. Click to get the select the legend. Click click again to select that part of the legend and click there click there and press delete now I can just format the legend a little bit I probably need to make it a little bit wider okay so west kinda correlates to west here east correlates to east here and I have my tornado chart see so we have our 0 to 75 here to the left 0 to 75 here to the right and that's because I have my XY scatter chart that's kind of 
creating these labels down here. So that's how you create a tornado chart, or this version of a tornado chart. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.